concussion coming off that thing standing right here. I still crack a smile every time I look at this piece of 556 five, wonderfulness. The Czechs ripped out a page from the Chinese and plagiarized the crap out of the scar. And for good reason, the scar was done right. And I mean this really is more than a slight resemblance. And it makes sense, the 805 was in the design process right around the SCAR was in its prime, hyped and excelling both in military and civilian sales. Obviously CZ wanted a piece of the pie. Fast forward to present day and the heavily borrowed design paid off in a big way. It's now the standard issue rifle for all armed forces in the Czech Republic, plus a handful of other users in other countries. Though the slightly modified Bren 806 was introduced last year, more on that later. When I got my 805 fresh from my FFL out of the box, at first blush I was psyched. The machining on the aluminum alloy upper receiver is near perfect, and the polymer furniture and lower is free of flashing or inconsistencies of any kind, and it has a slick modern aesthetic overall. Inside the box, along with your beautiful rifle, you'll find two quality USGI mags, a cleaning kit, and a user manual. And the box really is just a brown cardboard laminate box, almost exactly like what you'd find the SCAR in. You'll notice the SCAR thing is a bit of a theme here. Other nice bonuses, you get this nifty muzzle brake. It really does keep you shooting flat and reduces felt recoil very well. Though, also like the PWS brake found on your SCAR, you're going to get some concussive forces if you stand to the side of the shooter. I do really like that CZ threaded it in half by 28 instead of the 14.5 millimeter, so us Americans are good to go with our cans or other muzzle devices. On top of the 805, you get an excellent heavy duty pair of backup irons, and they're definitely a big improvement over the Evo 3 sights you get on the pistol version of the 805. For inspiration, CZ chose Troy on this one, and they really are a virtual copy of the battle sites. I guess nowadays they find something they like and roll with it, stuff the patents. But they did a nice job. The buttons are a little stiff, but they lock up solid and stay down when not in use. And definitely high quality, going along with the theme of the rifle. Let's back up to the design of the gun. This upper receiver looks so scar like, it's almost ridiculous. Even the monolithic upper rail and lower rail scream scar. Though these side plates are an ergonomic improvement. I was worried they'd retain too much heat being all aluminum, but that hasn't been the case at all. It runs fresh and cool. When breaking down the rifle, be careful. These pins here are not captive, and losing one would definitely ruin your day. But it comes apart very easily and continues to exude scar vibes left and right. They're both short stroke gas piston systems. The carrier is practically identical, though they did shorten it and extend the piston rod on the 805. It looks like that'll be a smart move as it saves some weight and it reduces the second impulse you feel when shooting the SCAR, which could save some cheaper optics from breaking. Up toward the front, the gas block here has two settings, one for normal use and the other for adverse conditions. You do have to depress this little pin to adjust the settings, but CZ recommends you only change it in a pinch, so that's fine. The SCAR also has two gas settings, unsuppressed and suppressed, which I do prefer over the adverse setting, as I use a can more often than I'd be in harsh conditions. Plus, on the SCAR, the settings can easily be changed by hand on the fly. Now, on the 805, you're also going to find a bayonet lug at the base of the gas block for you freedom lovers out there. I'll probably never use it, but it's a cool feature. Throw it all back together, sit back, and bask in admiration for this piece of eye candy. I have to say it again, the build quality is excellent. The fit between the upper and lower are as solid as a custom-built AR receiver set, so you're not going to get the wiggles. And to further drive home the point of quality, just look at how smoothly the carrier slides in the receiver. You'd think it's running on Teflon. My scar does run equally as smooth, but I don't remember it being this good when I first got it. Plus, it sounds a little more squeaky. Yes, I'm definitely grasping at straws here. Now the controls on the 805 aren't overly innovative, but they feel right. Not too hard, not too soft, positive indents, and easy to feel even with gloves on. I have noticed that the short throw safety is very difficult to manipulate with a thumb, but using your forefinger is a cinch and it's completely ambidextrous. The magazine release is also ambi, positioned just like an AR, and it's flawless. Mags pop right free with vigor, no need for tactical mag flips here. The charging handle is easy to grasp and can be swapped to either side exactly as you do on the SCAR, though it is long enough to poke you when the rifle's on a sling, and it rides high so your knuckles are perilously close to your optics mounts. Exercise extreme care when manipulating this bolt without gloves, or you're going to be diving into the first aid kit for band-aids, or just rub some dirt on it, as you prefer. So I do wish they would have angled the charging handle, that would seem a little more forward thinking, but that's easily remedied just like on the SCAR, and aftermarket parts are already becoming available. It is a reciprocating charging handle. That doesn't bother me at all. I actually like it on some guns. Everyone has an opinion about that, love it or hate it. Then here's where it gets a little dated. 
pull the charger back and you press this convenient little button here. The bolt locks back just as you'd expect, but then the button goes inert. That's correct. This thing has no bolt release. To drop the bolt free, you need to remove the mag or pull the charging handle again with a fresh mag inserted. It's just not effective economy of motion. I suppose it's a holdover from the AK, or more specifically the Czech VZ58 that so many of those soldiers were used to. Whatever the reason, it really is the only thing I truly dislike about this gun. Down to the lower, you'll notice it's a one piece with the pistol grip molded in, so no custom AR grips. It does, however, carry over the handgun-esque removable back straps so that you're gonna be able to better adapt it to your hand size when they become available, that is. I like that that's starting to show up on rifles. And this lower is compatible with all Stanag mags that I've tried, so your 5.56 mag collection will transfer over nicely. And as a nice touch, the mag well is nicely beveled. Okay, I've been fed up as late with the pathetically poor quality of triggers on tactical carbines. It completely blows to pay $2,000 for your rifle and realize that your Mossberg 500 has a superior trigger. I'm ecstatic that Bren didn't copy the SCARS 11 pound monstrosity of a trigger. Instead, you have a giggle inducing roughly four to five pound pull in two stages. It's no match trigger by any means. It has some slack and creep and the reset's a little bit long, but when it breaks, it's crisp and repeatable. I would never bother paying for an aftermarket trigger. It's completely acceptable. Moving to the stock at the rear, and you have what I think is a cool looking, unique polymer contraption. The stock was developed in-house and functions surprisingly well. It adjusts to four positions and very smoothly at that, and the comb can be adjusted via this snap-on cheek piece. I find the stock to be very comfortable, and the lock-up is relatively solid with just a little bit of play, though the stock adjustment lever and the cheek piece are the only chintzy filling parts on the entire rifle, and to me feel a little out of place. The stock folds just as you'd expect with the depression of a button, but it's only held in place with spring tension. It does stay in place better than some others that I've seen, but it's going to extend with a mild bump. Unfortunately absent on the rifle are QD sling points, though it does have front and rear sling attachment points on both sides. The overall accuracy is aided by that solid trigger and an excellent barrel. We're talking 16.2 inches of cold hammer forged steel, one and seven twist in the pencil profile. With Hornady match, I was able to settle in right under one MOA. Plinking ammo was closer to two or three, but I really need to do some more groups before I determine its true capabilities. And I've yet to test how the pencil barrel is affected as it heats up, but I would bet that it will start to string a little bit. The Bren 805 comes in at just over a hefty 8 pounds. That's pretty overweight when compared with the Scar Slim 7.25 pounds, which again is just another dated feature for a modern rifle. And as I mentioned is a primary reason the Czechs have already released the 805. It shed nearly a pound of weight. They installed a bolt release. It has a non-reciprocating charging handle and the costs are lower. I'm not sure exactly how it performs in comparison to the 805 and we may never see it in the American market, but it's good to know CZ has considered a few of these shortcomings. But the 805 itself is still in its infancy. It will continue as the Czech Force's primary rifle, and I'm sure its user database will continue to grow. After all, in the Czech Army rifle trials, it was chosen over the SCAR. Though, admittedly, it was due to the fact that the 805 would be produced domestically. So, we'll put an asterisk there. Talking reliability, for me, the function has been completely flawless. It chucks brass all day long, and given the very proven design, I suspect it will continue to perform at the very highest levels of next-gen military rifles. Guys, it really is an amazing gun. All of this and the price is right. Found on the street for around 1700 bucks, it's hard to beat. Those are some considerable savings over the SCAR, plus half the guys at the range are going to confuse the two rifles anyway, right? So with all of this going for the 805, I have a feeling third-party support's going to explode. Stocks, rails, grip straps, even lowers and barrels could come in the future. I don't see it not being a success. KNS has already released some really cool brand parts. And finally, when it comes to overall shooting ergonomics, it's impeccable. There's no unexpected edges to nick you, no uncomfortable angles. It's one of those guns that just gets better as you shoot it. So the big question, do you take the FN SCAR or the CZ Bren 805? Well, I actually sold my 16S. I'm more of a 17S fan anyway. There's no competition out there for it. It's the king of 308 in my opinion. But paired against the 16S, it's a real battle. Sure, the 805 took a couple steps back with the heavy weight and that obnoxious lack of a bolt release, but it wins with overall quality for the money. And both guns really do function almost identically. Again, the similarities can't be ignored. And yes, the SCAR does have a far more proven track record, and it's the OG. But is it worth an extra $600? I think that would be pretty hard to justify. So my decision, if both rifles were offered as a gift and I had to choose one to stay by my side, it's still the SCAR. But if I walk into a gun store with my hard-earned money at stake, the Bren 805 is coming home with me, and I won't look back.
So far, I am impressed.